beautiful theater district in Boston, Massachusetts. One of my favorite theaters in the United States, the beautiful Wilbur Theater here. I'm very, very excited to announce my favorite words of all time. Harmontown is now in session. Spencer Crittenden! Boston. My goodness. Wow. Oh, and they have cabaret-style seating. This is wonderful. What a great theater. This is really nice. Thank I thought we had a one-person standing ovation, but that was the cocktail waitress down there. <laughs> it sounds like they're standing up in their hearts. That's one of the warmest receptions we've ever gotten. Thank you, Boston. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, I was, very, you know, it's a, we, we haven't been in front of an audience in a while, and now to come out, come, come out here. Only, you know, the last three weeks in Los Angeles, we've been farting around and getting our sea legs back. But this is, uh, this is nice, and uh, I'm probably a little nervous because I, I, I wrote you guys a song because I wanted to get on your good side. <laughs> Like I don't want to. Yeah, I'm, 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 I, I have that privilege where I can just, I could just not know. Oh, it's a thousand people, and they paid. What'd you guys pay? What? Too much. Too much. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a working class town. It's always too much, right? <laughs> Everything's too much. Oh, I got, I got, I got toilets to, to make out of porcelain. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to have you plunging them. No, no, nor is that a bad occupation, sir. <laughs> I think this guy makes them. It's all, to me, it's all drudgery. It's just, I sit in a Zeppelin, like, thinking thoughts for money. So the ten migrant workers then, like, uh, just, like, type the thoughts for me. And I love all of them more than any, any Republican. I would, I would sell you out, America. If you're an unemployed welder who's been replaced by a robot, you're right. I'm a coastal elite. I, I hate you more than the people we're bringing in over the border. I'd love them because they pick my strawberries. I would trade you for anything. <laughs> it's all about extremes. It's a war between whether or not we're going to just let everyone flood in and eat each other alive or whether we have to have a fucking baby Schwitz. Uh... <laughs> baby Schwitz. Baby Schwitz. Coined it. Baby Hashtag baby Schwitz. <laughs> and again, my apologies to people who, through whatever connection or whatever philosophical uh, loyalty or actual familial connection, feel offense at the now everyday, maybe glib comparisons to Third Reichishness. Yeah. But I gotta say, you, I, look, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. When it comes to comparing you to Hitler, I like to jump the gun. <laughs> I like to get way up early. And I just think the worst thing that happens to you is you're a politician that got compared to Hitler too early, and you should learn to live with that. All politicians should be able to survive being compared to Hitler. It's not that hard a litmus test. <laughs> Did you have a hard day, honey? Yeah, uh, it was hard. What happened? Ah, uh, some of the people compared me to Hitler. Did you act like Hitler in any perceivable way? <laughs> well, my health care bill's a little draconian. Okay, but, yeah, okay, they'll get over it, go to bed, sleep like a non-Hitler baby. <laughs> now run that flowchart through <laughs> today's reality. Have a hard day? Yeah, compare me to Hitler. Mm, what did you do? Mm, uh, baby Schwitz. Baby Schwitz. It sounds like a delicious beer. 
Crack into a cold baby shit. Ah, the, ah, the press wants to get in. Well, the real news or the fake news? Oh, the Lugan press for sure. I mean, the fake news. I, the, the, yeah, they're trying to get in, but they won't. They won't wait the two weeks. Oh, honey, why do you need two weeks to let people in to see the kids? Uh, what are you doing that takes two weeks to change about your baby schwitz? It's either a room full of babies that deserve to be behind a beautiful, clean, comfortable chain link fence that I'm not at all saying is inhumane, well, especially for criminals, which everyone is that tries to get in no matter what. Like, 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 I mean, they, they, there's, there's, there's above board ways to try to get in, and if you don't, you're a criminal. And, and, and so if you're a criminal and there's like a baby blanket, you're a little on a Buck Rogers space blanket. Um, you're fine. Sorry, I don't want to get political tonight. I, I, I... But Dan, a, a lot of these babies are dangerous political dissidents and uh, intellectuals. You know, it's, we got we to gotta weed out the bad babies. But I'm just saying, it's like, so, so, so even taking it, so like, like, there should be a face value thing here. So, so it's like, I understand that you need the babies locked up. So I, now where do, we, where do we get into this part where I'm like, hey, can I come take a look at them? Uh... Maybe in two weeks. <laughs> what? That's cause for alarm. That's way more time than my landlord uh, has to wait before he opens my fucking door and comes in and looks at my bong and like... <laughs> right? Like, when I lived in an apartment, I was like, I could yell at the landlord if he, like, tried to get in. And I, I was like, you need to wait 30 hours! It's the law! Oh, it's fine, but you haven't paid your rent in six months. Yes, so what? I got rights! <laughs> you need to wait 30 hours! <laughs> uh, all right, anyways, here's my stuff. That, oh. that was Dan's Boston song, everybody. And hey... Yeah. These are, these are turbulent times, and if you're, if you're having passionate feelings, and I don't even care if you're wrong, like, I, I, if, you're, if your passionate feelings are wrong, like, look, I know I live in a bubble, I'm coming out from L.A., you people are my hosts, you're being gracious to me, rolling out a red carpet, you're feeding me your food, you're, you're putting me up in your hotel, I mean, not, yeah, you are. Uh, I'm sure your taxes paid for that hotel. Um, but, I mean, you're, 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 I am a guest here, so I just want to thank you. I did not intend to go off about this thing that everyone's talking about. And if you are, there's a thousand people here, so there's probably, there probably are a couple of you that have, like, feelings that I'm rubbing up against with my liberal claptrap. And, and, I, and I want to thank, I thank, thank you for, thank you for, thank you for zipping it. <laughs> is what I was going to say. Let me finish. I was about to thank you for shut the fuck up. Uh, but no, I really appreciate that. I don't because I, I don't want to start a fucking show with me like oh, I, and then someone's like because we're just gonna do what we've been doing on Twitter for six months. Like, yeah, I, I want to reward your patience and your silence and your well, hopefully not your total silence, but maybe your intermittent. You, you know what I could go for right now, Dan? A song. Yeah, a, well, a song and the smooth taste of a nice cold baby Schwitz. <laughs> The low carb b beer and a, with a nipple on it. Yes. Try, try new baby Schlitz lime. Tuck into the room temperature titty <laughs> that rewards you like a good mama after a hard day in the rock yard. Yes. Baby Schwitz. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, let's hear this song for God's okay, sake. Okay, I'm trying to look for it. Okay. All right. So I, 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 I have not heard this song. I didn't know that you composed a little... A little I, yeah, I, and I got to do it a cappella. If I had time, I would have I would have like gotten out Garage Band or something, but it would have been a disaster. I was a, so it's a cappella. I don't know, and I'm not really a singer or a musician, but uh, you, 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 you paid, so... <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> and I don't do a lot of research about the cities I go to. <laughs> I, I, I know the typewriter was invented here. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Boston, Massachusetts, you sits on the Boston Bay. <laughs> and the tea you tossed into it made the British go away. <laughs> your buildings and your streets are famous, so is all your food. <laughs> But here's what I've learned while walking from the lobby to my room. <laughs> you might be alcoholics, <laughs> Austin. 
<laughs> and I don't throw that word around. <laughs> you maybe have a problem, Boston, and that makes you my kind of town. <laughs> Boston, Massachusetts, you sits on the Boston Mall. <laughs> and you may, Massachusetts, be the cutest of them all. So now you're on my side for, I got you for an hour and a half. <sighs> I could do whatever now. I could fart on a fucking shoe. I spent a lot of, just spent the, most of the afternoon <laughs> today. <it. laughs> I spent most of my afternoon today just hanging out by the Boston Bay. It was so nice out there. You're going to drop by that mall, too. Yeah, the, oh, the mall. mall. The famous the mall. mall of they Boston. Got the, they got Sephora. They got the Baby uh, Gap. The birthplace of Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. <laughs> when he was working on Thriller with uh, Button Gwyneth. I was having some pizza up in, what do you call it, the North End? The, the little, North little End, yeah. Area. And I was just typing in, because you know, I was here not that long ago, and my girlfriend and I, we went and saw, like, all the kind of the big, you know, touristy, like, historical spots. And I just, I just typed in, like, let's see what I'm around historically. And, like, number three on Yelp, Skinny House. Yeah. Famous for being a skinny house. That's it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not, it's no, not. No, like, like, the Paul Revere statue was number five. <laughs> Well, there, it's been there forever. What has it done for anyone lately? <laughs> this is the Paul Revere statue, like, spit out burgers, you know? If you... It's there to keep the redcoats away. It's doing its job. Yeah, we take it for granted a little bit, but it's kind of a gargoyle, you know? You take a picture, you move on. Skinny house, that sounds, like, important. I thought it was a vegan restaurant when you... Uh, skinny house. Skinny house. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, the only restaurant where you leave thinner than, than you came in, that would be Beverly, that would be yes, Beverly Hills. You, it's, you, you can't even get out. Yeah. Yeah, if we've done our job, you won't be able to leave. <laughs> We're going to feed you so well. That you're a fire hazard. Yeah. But seriously, there is a... Now, my, obviously, my view is skewed. When I, my, first, uh, my first few times I was in New York, I was working as a writer, and all I saw was Times Square. I was staying at a hotel, and I'm, like, telling everybody, yeah, New York's like this, and it's like that. There's, there's hot dogs all over the place and vomit. <laughs> oh, no, I don't like New York. And then my friend took me, and, like, he's like, no, there's, like, you know, you got to go below 105th and... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the fuck the, the people talk about there. Uh, so I, 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 my view of Boston is limited to a hotel lobby. But I will say, I think, I think it's safe to say, there is a broader definition of when you're supposed to call the police. Like, right, on a, on a, on a man that, that, that... Wait a second. That is like... Our show's being interrupted. Oh. Uh, Schraub is crawling onto the stage wearing an outfit or costume. It's hard to explain. Get He's got shoes on his hands. Used to it. Get used to it. It's hard to explain. Get used to it. Used to it. Get used to it. How's it going? <laughs> Rob Schraub, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I bet you thought I was a dog. I, or I thought you were a seal. I thought you were doing like a little seal bit. The sea dog of the ocean. <laughs> the first rule of theater, always make an entrance. <laughs> or be, wait to be brought out. <laughs> he, he doesn't like being, he doesn't like waiting to be brought out. No, he doesn't like, he's not a patient man. So before we started the show, Rob was like 
brainstorming stage work and stuff. Like I saw him pulling various props off the wall and he was like trying to use chairs as stilts. It was really watching a master honing his craft. <laughs> And to see that that resulted in the result it did, it was yeah. truly just wonderful for me. This, this, is only, this is only the first part of it. Yeah. <laughs> this is act one. He's got, Rob, has, Rob promises more costume changes tonight than Dolly Parton. <laughs> uh, oh, look. Look how sad A this, stool yeah. with no back. You, you get so sad then. <laughs> Where's he going? Where's Shrub, he going? everybody. <laughs> Our next guest. <laughs> Anyways, I there's, I mean, I'm just saying in the in the in the day that I've been in my hotel, I have He's seen a lot of grown men. He's gonna hurt himself. <laughs> Steve, come help. Dan, just continue. Keep he's going here, yeah, Malice. Keep going. He's stilting on just, chairs. Just, Dan, Dan. Keep going. Keep going. Do, do your thing. Do your part, and I'll do my part, he says. Get, get, down. Yeah, get, get even with us. 50 50. Don't upstage us. Yeah. Yeah, Rob, Ooh. don't upstage us. <laughs> Here's, what? <laughs> here's, You've been great. Here, here's, here's my impression of Schraub on an airplane. Uh, you know, they say if you get on the airplane's Wi-Fi, that's how you get hacked. <laughs> and then here's Rob at the hotel this morning in the, in the lobby. You know, if you get on the hotel Wi-Fi, <laughs> isn't that how they get your credit card? Or... Yeah, and, I, and I'm like, yeah, Shrab, have you heard uh, that uh, they're cutting people's ankles in the, in the grocery store parking lot? I'll, I'll, I'll forward you an email about it because I'm 70. <laughs> so he's a very prudent, cautious man in real life. He doesn't like to... I'm prudent and conscious. <laughs> I got it. I, that, that was just me hitting the thing by accident. Oh. It's very sensitive. <laughs> I feel like I'm rolling with a lot of punches. You're doing I, great. <laughs> All right, well, don't, don't. Unlike other people, I don't need that. I don't thrive on that. I, I, I will earn that. Like, like you don't think I was, would be doing that in my living room by myself. <laughs> Crawling around with a Wookiee jacket. It flew you out here, man. I know. And, and, and I don't know if you heard the I'm most recent show, but it was like he, he found out he was coach and he, he, he almost had a meltdown. I... That's not true. Had to That's bump him up true. to first class during the show. When's the last time? A toilet maker, when's the last time you flew first class? Yeah, never. Your boss maybe did on his way to a ceramic seminar. Because be, he's like, because be okay. to, to figure out how to gouge your labor. You'd be okay with me sitting in the back of the plane while you're up there with your... No, I wouldn't feel okay because because I have empathy and I I I, 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 tr I treat people with respect and I, I don't I don't tromp all over oh. their shows and yes you know thank like you I, That's I, very I, very nice I open of you. my doors to my friends I, I thank I, you I, 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 and then and then and then and then I respect and support them and then, cool and then, and then, and then I <laughs> so anyways my I was just all I was gonna say is that there's a lot of drunk people here. I, I, <laughs> it's a, I, I like, but, but very, it's a weird thing because like, it's weird. It's not the amount, it's the age. It's the fact that it's like a all ages affair. Like, a, like got guys that just look like, like a friend of my dad's, like s just swaying. Yeah. I'm never, I like, like, like people. Yeah, that, we, we were out last night. Like we got into town late. Dan and I went for a quick, like, like, you know, like, like nightcap. And there was a guy. I'll, let's let's put him at 57 years old. 54. 
maybe. He looked, he looked like a prop master. Is that a reference? The no, you guys aren't TV showrunners. He looked like a prop master. Yeah, yeah he looked like a, like a like a like a vice principal or something. And I put uh, him more below the line. Like yeah, that, and, like and uh, yeah. but he 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 came out of the bathroom and he was like completely like using all the surfaces to not fall down. <laughs> Like, like, he, like a but, xenomorph. But the thing alien. was, but he had this, he, he had this incredible, he, like, if I, if I was that drunk and I go, oh, fuck, I got to make it all the way out, out there through a very narrow corridor of bar stools and people moving and people serving drinks. I would, I would get on my knees and say, take me to jail. <laughs> but this is not good, this is not good podcasting, but this was the, he was so excited about it. This is what separates Boston from drunks that I see in Los Angeles. This was the look on the guy's face as he was barely making it, going, About it. It's a it's a friendly town. I think I, I think that's the key. Because I was gonna say in New York and LA, like I've been both in New York and LA, I've been with drunk people, I, all the way up to Andy Dick levels of uh, <laughs> of of actual Andy Dick. And, and, and like there's a, but even if you're not Andy Dick and you're famous and you have this like like tag in your head, so like like New York bouncers will be like. They'll, it's very impressive the way that they'll, like even a guy who's like a functional alcoholic, but you can, he's in that dark pocket of the night, like, and he's just like, he's, he's pulling it off with his friends, but the bouncer will be like, nope. Like, like, look, he's like, he's, and I was, like a bartender will go, go like, like, uh-uh, not you. you. You won't look me in the eye. Like it's very empathic and like, like sentimental kind of like, like, like hierarchy there. It's like, 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 but, but, but I do think that, I mean, here there's like a support of the, which I guess reminds me of Milwaukee. It's like, it's like, like, like that guy, that guy had a smile on his face because he wasn't ashamed of what was happening to him <laughs> because, because the bartender was probably, after we left, was probably like, Kevin, you want another one? And he was like, you know, she probably put out a rope ladder for him to get to the bar. And, <laughs> He th and, 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 and he said, am I in a helicopter? And she probably said, you can be, Kevin, you can be. If you just dream hard enough. You were waiting for me to... Oh, shit. You were waiting for me to do the... Uh, it's going to be that easy? The, the master of accents. <laughs> You've heard my Australian tour. I am a man of a thousand dialects. What's, what do you... They're liking that hat, mate. They're liking that happening. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, say that, uh, that you like the hat, that hat mate, but in a, in a full hardcore Southie Boston accent. You like that hat? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I just know the R's go away. I don't know anything. But I do know my friend Dave Horowitz. I think he lived here for a while, and he said at this very theater there was a Blue Man Group show, and there was a commercial for it on TV in the '90s. And he told me about it. He's like, oh, you're going to Boston. You know, every time I think of Boston, I think of this hilarious commercial for the Blue Man Group at the Wilbur Theater in the 90s. And uh, it was a you know, Blue Man Group, and then it was one of those things where they do the theatrical testimonials, like the audience people are like, like the everyman Joe is like, like, like come see the show. And it was great. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to find the quote. He told me, uh, fuck, God damn it, Harmon. Are there people together. in the sky? There's three, there's two balconies. <laughs> Rob, 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 that's called a balcony. Oh, okay, here is, sorry. So it's, it's just, it is, he's, there's just this guy with like a baseball hat on and he, and he uh, oh God, we're all gonna die. Uh, the, the, the and it's, it's for Blue Man Group, and they're like, Blue Man Group, come see the show. Critics are raving, oh, the Blue Man Group's at the Wilbur Theater, and then there's just this guy in the lobby of the, of the Wilbur doing one of those testimonials from Boston. He goes like, he goes, hell of a ride, pack your bags. <laughs> it's like Greg, Greg Proops is old joke. He goes, I love being in Boston. Like, I, I, you try to flirt, every girl you talk to is like flirting with Cliff Clavin. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I got pulled over in Delaware once by a cop, and I could, it was my first time talking to anyone from that region at all. And I was, so, so I was going through this horrible experience because I was like, I felt like the, the man's coming down on me, and it's like, but also he's tight. It sounds like a cartoon. He's like, he's like, you don't have an insurance card. Like, I was like, come on, this is silly. Like, you, <laughs> you can't have a gun. You sound like a, you sound like a TV show. <laughs> but then people where I'm from, they, if you tell them how we, I talk, where we come from, people go like, no, that's Fargo. That's far, that's not real. I'm like, that is real. We talk like that in Milwaukee. I have just dropped that accent in support of a professional career. <laughs> <laughs> 
I no longer speak like a Philistine. <laughs> I talk like Tom Brokaw. All the time. I have no nasal twang. <sighs> I, I lost the song uh, luster. You guys are losing faith in me. No, we're not, Dan. We love you. Okay. Here, okay, here's the thing. All right. Oh, come on. Really? What are you, Tony Danza? What are you? Is it... <laughs> Just, just, I'm, so, you, I'm you sorry, doing? you want me to be uncomfortable? Okay. I don't know. You Would you say, rather I be uncomfortable? Because it's, it's your show. <laughs> Shrub pointed at the Harmontown sign. Spencer gives a table. Shrub, what was the, uh, we, we took a, a, a long, a, a car ride from uh, Dan. Okay, you want it, you want it, we were, this Let's is do something. This. I don't yeah. know. Do you guys the have... Whole, the, the whole ride from Dan's place to, L, to LAX takes about, let's call it 40 minutes. Let's call it... was like it an hour. 40 yeah. minutes to an hour. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's very and fair. And I had something to get off my chest. <laughs> Do you guys have movie posters here? <laughs> like, like, not just movie posters, like, coming this summer, but, but like, 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 bus stop signs that have movie posters and stuff like that. Okay, okay, so you know what a movie poster is, then. <laughs> now, we could get, now we can start okay, now we can get my down to it. thing. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but a couple of months ago, and I think it's still in theaters, there was this movie called Peter Rabbit, and it's about a... a yeah. And it's about a, a... It's a movie with a bunch of computer-generated rabbits in it, one of them named Peter. <laughs> I know, it's about time. Now, I haven't seen this movie. I'm sure it's fine, and I'm sure the people worked really hard on it. But the advertisers, there's a poster that says, and I, I go through this every time one of these movies comes out, it says, there's a picture of Peter Rabbit, no pants, shirt, going like this, in front of a blue void, and then it says, in big blocky letters, better eight than never. A-T-E, better eight than never. Right. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Is this, is this a sequel to a movie that he ate something in? <laughs> is this... Is this something that we've been waiting for, the Peter Rabbit movie? They're like, Paddington 2? Where's Peter Rabbit? God damn it. Better eight than never. Good. Wait a minute. Why eight? <laughs> well, because you know, he'd also have to be like Peter Stomach or something. You know, like Peter, Peter, Peter Eater. You know, like better, better. But he's got it. no pants on and he's jumping like this. His stomach is flat. It's washboard. I... <laughs> and... Is he holding a carrot in the oven? No, no, not no carrot, no stump carrots, no nothing. Not a pile of right. carrots. He doesn't have not an empty full... plate. No, no. Better eight than never. What the... This happens all the time. Remember the fucking it, Peabody movie? The dog movie? The scene? Oh, yeah. Well, Sherman and Peabody Sherman, movie. The yeah. tagline for that was... Anybody? Come on, you know this. The, do the dog father of all comedy. Right. <laughs> Sherman and Pete, uh, it's about a talking dog who gets a pet boy who travels in time, not to mob times. <laughs> Dinosaurs, Abe Lincoln, Napoleon, not to mob times. <laughs> mob times. And it's the dog father of all, com you know that thing when we go, well, you know, it's the mother of all comedies, and then it's the you know, the sisterhood of all comedies, but the dog father of all comedies, the godfather of all right, comedies. Right, and we all know that there's the father of all comedies. That's yes. a very common thing to say. But I guess, I guess dog and god rhyme? No, they don't. The dog father of all comedies, better eight than never. Look for it, it'll piss you off. You'll be driving down the street and you'll go, Rabbit, eight. I guess all animals eat. <laughs> and this one must have ate something, and he's happy about it, and I should go see this but movie was, because of why. Because it's better than never. 
never can't come and soon enough. <laughs> because that's when I'm gonna see your movie. <laughs> Jesus, come on. Get the fuck out of here with that. Get the fuck out of here with that. that uh, I gotta pick the kids up. At, it's gonna be, I mean, like the 405's a parking lot. Why don't we just, uh, uh, better eat than never. Okay, send it. Put it out. <laughs> I gotta get home. I gotta get home. There's the, 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 the fucking water jug guy is delivering today. And if I don't, if I don't open but you, the but door, you're, sir, you're the head of a studio. You should. You, you, we need you to sign Nobody's off. Nobody's on... watching. Nobody cares. They're just <laughs> driving by. Well, exactly. They see rabbit. They see a bunch of words. Uh, maybe I'll see it. My God. All of those posters should just say "Custody Weekend is coming." <laughs> <laughs> they should just say, "Drop your kids off." They'll be relatively safe for two hours? Probably not. When did, when did, when did, when was rhyming such an important part of movie taglines? I mean, long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, doesn't rhyme with anything, you know? 26 million years in the making. You will, you will believe a man can fly? Right, right. Superman. In space, no one can hear you scream. No rhyming involved. Now everything is like, uh, better up than pup. Better <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're right, you're yeah. right. <laughs> Levy, Levy, what was the Yogi Bear one? Oh, yeah, Do you remember that? the Yogi Bear? G yeah. Great things come in bears. <laughs> that's a, that's that a very Boston... Which... I can see why that, that captures which, your heart. It feels like a very fringy, how do you like them for, apples? But for, that uh, sounds like... <laughs> well, first of all... That sounds like a gay porn tagline. It tag sounds line. like a... That's why they like it. They're like, yeah, great things come in bears. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 hey, come on. Hey, this is retarded. Everyone from Boston is a Mark Wahlberg Retarded, character. man. <laughs> this is retarded. I'm coming in your bed. <laughs> Wicked pisser. Fuck in your bed. He's fucking a chair. Great things come in bears. I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope it's another bear. <laughs> I, hope it's a, I hope it's a great I, bear. I think it's Mark Wahlberg. I think he's that's <laughs> that's why he talks to animals so much. He's 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 grooming them. That's why he bought a zoo. Did he did he buy a zoo? That's yeah. why he bought it. That's Matt Damon. I get those guys mixed up. Yeah, I'm gonna accept that groan. <laughs> I might have gone over the line. I might have accidentally asked you to trivialize pedophilia in your mind. That's good to find your uh, boundaries, Boston. <laughs> Certainly didn't find them in the elevator. Like, guys that look like they should be a senator just fucking swaying and breathing out of their ears. They're so drunk and they're like, like clapping their hands randomly. Whoa, whoa. I mean, they're probably from out of town, but you're... you're, you're I got an elevator. You, you at, laid out that carpet for them. We're staying at, we're, we're staying at, a, at, a, at a nice hotel, and we, uh, I, was, I stupidly chose to stay way up top, like, like I'm on the top floor, but it's a big, con stupid. big convention in town. It's like a big car thing, so it's a lot of like Fast and Furious-looking dudes, like a lot of big, a lot of giant, like very tanned biceps and a lot of big fake titties, and it's... And, and so I get to stop at every stop on the way down, and it's just a lot of cologne. It's a potpourri of muscles and perfumes. Potpourri. And everybody's muscles. lovely and nice, and like no one was a jerk and everything. But just one guy gets in, and he's just, you know, he's like probably my age, but because of the, all of the tanning, he looks a little older, and he's really big and buff. And he stands, he does a thing where he doesn't turn around and face the door. He just, because we're rammed in there. So he's got his back to the door, he's like, Anyone he's, notice no one talks in elevators? Oh, boy. I, Anybody got any coca? I'm the guy. Oh, there's a kid. Hey, kid, you like to do coca? I don't like that guy. I don't like that guy. <laughs> the, guy, the, guy the guy that gets on the bus or the tram or the, you know, and, and it's just like, what is this, the fossil flyer? Come on. Just put a smile on your face. Like, wait, come on. We're not, we're not sitting here in silence because we lack the fucking aptitude to... <laughs> To be jocular, we're just we're 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 in mass transit. We're having a bad day. Right? We're minding our own business. Like I, it's a, you know, you, uh, people eat people on these things. <laughs> we want we're prepared for that. How's that sound? We weren't prepared for your open mic. 
and then, and then the, door, the door opened, and there wasn't really room for three people, but three people were waiting to get on, like halfway down. And, and he goes, he goes, hey, yeah, 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 I can't do the accent. He goes, yeah, 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 you're cute. Uh, you get on, we'll kick some of the ugly guys off. Uh, he was, every floor had a new routine. It was, it was, it was disappointing. Yeah. Was anybody like going? <laughs> well, they have to. That's the thing. Is that, is that was that people nervous laugh, and then they take the nervous laugh, and they don't, they don't. Something in their brain doesn't tell nervous laughter from fucking real laughter. Like I'm killing over here. Oh, I'm not. I t- like, like, I, I t- we got them in L.A. We got them in, in Burbank. We got them in uh, we got Detroit. Them in, uh, we got them in Detroit. <laughs> Living in America. Uh, is it that, that Huey Lewis song? Did they? Did, did, did he, well, is, is Boston mentioned in the Huey Lewis song, "The Heart of Rock, Heart and, of roll? rock and Roll"? Or is it? Or is it? Because because when I was a, when I, when I, I was a, it is. my local radio stations had a version of that song, and then he would like I think Huey Lewis like said all seventy thousand American cities, and then they would put it in. So it was like during the like the extended dance mix. You guys are too young to be, have been alive at a time when there was radio, let alone when radio was so unaccountable or that Huey Lewis tended and mixes were being Lewis. played. Um, H- Huey but, Lewis at one point roamed the earth as a god. Uh, and and there, there was just not enough Huey Lewis to still, they would stretch what they had out into power mixes uh, while you were driving to work uh, at your sundial plant. And... Uh, <laughs> You, to prepare your Broncho burgers, and and uh, and so and, so, and, and then they would just have random snippets of Huey Lewis going Milwaukee, <laughs> because you lived in Milwaukee, and I'm assuming that he that he, somewhere else he's he like probably wouldn't Medford, La Butte, yeah, uh, <laughs> Valencia, hard rock and roll. Um, oh, so anyways, oh kudos, you guys, come on, your vending machines. <laughs> The, the, uh, is the pay range thing catching on? Pay range? Have you heard of this? She's, she's, One person. All right. That's awesome. I'm going to fucking weep. I was so sad last night because I'm in a hotel. It's like the food, the room service is in the past 11, which I don't understand. Like, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm in a... Uh, why, would you, why would you stop having people make food for people in a hotel after 11 when if I wanted food before 11, I wouldn't eat at a hotel? I, it doesn't make any sense... <laughs> Like, wait, like, why are you, what do you think room service is for? I'm drunk, I'm dangerous, like, like, <laughs> quell me or face the fucking urban legends that will befall you. I, 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 I have a sea of accountants and lawyers. I can do anything I want to this weird hipster colonial art. Um, I could, I could just fold this up and put it in my duffel bag. I like Paul Revere. I'm gonna flip. <laughs> I've, I've, I've done, I've broken shit lately. I'm entering a dark chapter of my life. I, I, I've just unscrewed weird urban uh, art fixtures and just like dropped them and... I, I've, I've gotten very good at, put, at putting together like Legos, the remote control, because the remote controls never work at some point. I just throw it at the wall and they go, I'm gonna put that back together now. I like, and they, yeah, uh, they usually work. Yeah, so you know people t- take, sorry, you know people take remote controls traveling because it's more, it's easier for them than like using the fucking hotel remotes? Oh, uh, yeah, like... That's you, brilliant. Like, that's, like, next level. That's fucked oh, I up. I love you, too. Oh, that's nice. Anyways... <laughs> Thank so you, sir. I got enough of a little di- digression there, but uh, you, you said the key is fill me with chili and you won't have a problem, but, but the... <laughs> that's the key. But, so I was very sad. I was like... There's oh, other problems that I go I got back to the hotel at, like, 11.10 or something. There's no room service. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing. So I go, oh, oh God, are there vending machines? I don't know. I call the front desk guest services. I'm like, wait, why is there a guest services? Have that guy make sandwiches. I... I <laughs> What, what else is his job? There's nothing else available. He just has to keep answering and saying, we can't do anything? That's, like, make sandwiches. Just bad ones, even. Just be like, look, I, like, we've all crashed at friends' houses. We don't expect royal treatment. It's just like we're, we're drunk. We're hungry. So, but, but anyways, I didn't... I, is there, I, I'm sorry to bug you with this, but is there, are there vending machines? I don't know. He's like, well, there should be one right on your floor if you, if you go right towards the window. And I, I go, okay, thank you. <sighs> vending machines, I, I find my roll of cash. Here we go, the vending machine trip. Am I right, kids? <laughs> oh, dollar by dollar with the, oh, face it this way, and oh, it's spitting back out. You don't know what, like, what is it? What does it want from us? Like, what, what? this one's crisp. This one's got bubble gum on it. You like that one? I, I, oh, the corner can't be folded. The corner has to be folded. The, 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 the White House should be showing. That's not the White House. 
That's the Lincoln uh, place. I know my shit. It's the Lincoln Bay. I don't come to Boston Harbor without uh, 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 the Boston Mall without, without. Anyways, so, so I go up to the thing and I'm like, oh, here we go again. There's a little sticker on the thing with a little QR code. It says, uh, hey, get the app. I fucking pull out my phone. What? I point the camera at the QR code. A little link comes down and goes, you want to go get this app? <laughs> go to the app store because this is the app they're talking about. <laughs> app goes, W what's up? <laughs> <laughs> you want to download me? And, and, and they're like, look, we don't want anything from you. They're like, thanks for signing up. Give us your email. We're going to shoot you an email. You confirm you want to join our club. Whatever. You can give us a fake email if you want. Don't give us a fake email. Here's $2. $2 in the vending machine. I got a free bag of fucking popcorn. <laughs> $1.25. I ran to my room, like I looked around, I went back to my room, I'm like, I'm eating a free bag of popcorn from a vending machine because I downloaded an app. Like, like homeless people don't have a chance. They're never gonna, they're never gonna catch up to our Logan's Run society. There's, there, there's people out on the street going, can I please have a quarter? We're like, quarters don't exist. <laughs> Like, like, like I, I, popcorn is now exchanged uh, on a currency of ideals. I, I thank you for your interest in our institution. Here's your popcorn. I, I didn't even do anything. I didn't make a toilet for that money, even indirectly. Even the toilet making that I do in Hollywood called like, Monster House. Like, I don't, I, 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 no, none of that went into this thing. I was like, I was like, like, I did nothing. I was just a dude with a phone. So I got popcorn for being a dude with a phone. So I went back, and then I'm like, these people need all my money. I, like, like, whatever they're working on that needs to spread, and it needs to be how all of society works. So I did do, go through the maybe 40 to 80 minute process of getting my credit card in there. And, but but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an app for vending machines. It makes you like the Tarzan of vending machines. It, when you're near a vending machine that has this thing in it, the vending machines, if you turn on your notifications, it's consensual, you can choose to not do it. The, ven the, the vending machines will, will, whisk, will vibrate your pocket and go, psst, I know you like Twizzlers. <laughs> You've bought a lot of them. Like, we're trying to get rid of some over here. We being a box of food that normally you can only, that you love and you look inside and you see all these fun things behind these robot arms and you're like, ugh, but the filthy dollar thing, like that turns you off. I don't wanna, I don't wanna engage in this gross fucking c c capitalist sex thing with like this herpy fucking handshake that you do with these robots. Like, ugh, give me your dirty fucking hepatitis money and I'll give you some back in a fucking bubblegum laden pit and you fucking, uh, bite it to uh, 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 everything's filthy and disgusting and nothing works and it's just like they've eliminated it you it, it, go, it goes hey you like diet coke two for one bro get over here <laughs> I, you say to, you're like i, I gotta Would go you like, where are you going uh something oh, 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 oh. And, and, you, and, you, and you and you go to the thing and you don't do anything it's like it's like here you are 25 dollars on your on your credit it's like lights up if you've never seen that little led thing on a on a vending machine, say credit $25. <laughs> it's like you won life. Now, Dan, I, I know, Dan. And you're just like, fucking salted nut rolls. Whee, boom, uh, uh, cr peanut butter crackers. I give a fuck now. I was like, like what? <laughs> I, 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 I don't usually get those. I mean, they look gross and dry and orange, but the, why not? There's no, I'm not, and, and, and I'm just like, I take up, and you don't have to like load up because you can come back. It's, it's yours. You own the vending machine now. But is it? It's your property. But is and, it? And you just wait, you walk the fuck damn, away. There's no change. Damn, there's nothing. Isn't this how like they get your credit card number? And <laughs> I don't know what. It's great. I no, it's called good. It's good. back. That would be if this was a comedy album. That would be a great. It would be like okay. Yeah. Then there'd be a little bit of silence, and then my and then next would, bit would be like diapers are hard to buy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have kids, but I wish they were easier to buy. So now you, do you still have credit on? Is this just that one particular jukebox? A jukebox. Uh, yeah. 
because well, they, have the, they have the jukebox app too, but the, the, is, is this vending machines all around the world now that you can do this with? No, it's like, it's like everything's, everything's being appified. So it's like, like, it's like, it's like this, this thing uses other apps and, and banks and things to like, like it interfaces with Apple Pay or MasterCard has a thing that's like Apple Pay or there's like all these services where you can take a credit card. It's basically like PayPal. You can like put a, put, you can put some of your money in a reservoir, but it's your money. It's just that the vending machine now knows you're good for it. You're a fish. You're a whale. <laughs> Uh, oh shit, Harmon's in town. This, this guy, this guy you takes down Tim Cheetos the like joint. a fucking. This guy moves Cheetos. We've been trying to move Cheetos. I'm telling you, they have discounts. They have, like, it's like, like, think of all the times that you've bought stuff out of a vending machine. What if you were, what if you were recognized for that by vending machines? What if, like if all you of were, them respected you? You for would that? be famous. Like vending machine famous. Through vending machines, yes. That you would like walk by them and they go, hey. hey. Like, like, hey, Tony, like, 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 like do, do you want, do you want a payday? We don't have salted nut rolls, but I know you like peanuts and nougat, and, 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 and you just go, like, maybe later, and they're, like, fine, like, we don't care, but, like, we'd love for you to have what we have, and it just, it just feels, I cried, I cried all night. I was a little drunk, but I just, I really had an emotional reaction. I was, like, weeping to my girlfriend. I was, like, this is, I, I have a sea of text messages, like, and she's going, okay, I'm glad you're happy. But I didn't punch a wall, and I didn't break any light bulbs, and uh, Just cause... I didn't. I didn't get on Twitter and like yell at a 15-year-old kid until he hung himself. Because I... you were descending into a diabetic coma. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, like, How many items do you reckon you had last night? I had, I had, I, 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 that's the other thing, is because I, I didn't have to. How load many? Up. How many? I had a bag of Cheetos. I One, had a bag of free popcorn, and, which doesn't count, and. Uh, <laughs> And then, I, and then the aforementioned, I got those go, like glow-in-the-dark orange peanut butter crackers. Right. Just, glow as, in the just, dark. As a, just as an experimentation, which I am now free to do because I'm a vending machine lord. I can now. <laughs> this is good for everybody. This is churn. Like I, I, I'm now going to be a more open-minded vendi, ven, 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 vendetta. Uh, what a lot of people don't know, and Dan would be embarrassed if I mentioned it. Um, I looked out my hotel window last night about 1 a.m. and. There was Dan standing in the corner of Charles and Stewart, just handing food out to the homeless all night long. <laughs> just here's some. It here's was some adorable. Cheetos. Very so I giving. Know, wait, wait, I don't know where he's going. Did with you that. guys have a? <laughs> did you guys have a hard time sleeping last night? Because yeah. we're on, on LA time. Yeah. You had a hard time sleeping. Oh yeah, so yeah. hard. What'd you do? Would you do anything? I yelled at people online. Okay. <laughs> What's the beef? Let's let's skip it. What's your beef? I, I forced myself to stay up until like 3 a.m. just yelping places I wanted to eat at when I, when, I, when I got up. I didn't have to force myself because there were two ladies upstairs on the balcony talking all night long. Wait, can you, let me, let, I, I can't believe I'm doing this. Do you mind if I disrupt you for a second? <laughs> I, I can't even I can't even believe my, myself. <laughs> Why do I? But no, I just want to put the wheels in motion because I have a friend here that I want to I want to introduce people to. Uh, uh, a, a, a Aaron, if you want, uh, 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 start making your clumsy way to uh, whatever circuitous path you can. To Aaron it. McGathy, everybody. No, I'm trying. I'm trying That's a lie. We're, it's a lie. It's a trick. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sure. we're, we're sorry. I fell for it myself. What a weird like, oh, lie. Yeah, it's yeah, a, a weird thing. Uh, obviously, everyone would believe that. Oh, his ex-wife <laughs> is here. We miss her. That was an awful I, joke. I felt... I it felt... was great for everybody but you. <laughs> What's that? What? Help? Oh, wait, someone needs hey, help. Hey, can we get someone? Is there someone? Someone needs help. Call 911 or something. Is he hurt? Is he... He is needs he... help. He needs medical help. Oh, shit. Can we get a... Uh, a doctor? Can we can we get an ambulance here? Do we have any uh, medical team out here? Was he choking? All right. Does he need water? Oh, is there, no, it's okay. For uh, you, did, you did absolutely the right thing. Thank you for yeah. For throwing it sounds up a, like he's getting flight. faint. Um, all right, awesome. Well, We're getting him some air. He's, okay, great. <clears throat> Thank
Thanks what, for pulling together, everybody. We appreciate it. Look yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> you're killing people. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Your vending machine gave him the vapors. <laughs> He probably got excited. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna make jokes about what happened. Like, that's not the joke area for us right now. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait until tomorrow, and we can make all the jokes we want. Dan. Uh, but anyways, uh, no. Uh, anyway, that, the, so, the, the, yeah. Aaron, is Aaron. Uh, is that him? <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, hey. Have you, yeah. have you guys Let's ever, introduce uh, him. Have a stool. Have a stool. ever heard of the podcast Lore? Oh, awesome. awesome. This is Aaron Minky, everybody. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. Thanks for, thanks for, thank you. I'm such a big fan. You don't know who I am, but I'm a big fan. I love this shit. Holy shit. Yeah, for those who don't know, Lore is a very popular podcast. It's, uh, you know, Aaron's kind of a self-starter, and it's like, uh, it's lore. It's like, uh, which I would describe as the crossroads between legend and historical fact, right? Like, like it's like, oh, for every, for every vampire that we hear exists, there's like a reason why we heard vampires exist, which go goes back to some actual historical thing, and that's what lore is. Right. That's a pretty good description. Yeah. yeah. So I discuss football and politics most of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but, you know, and I think, I think particularly, like, I would say the, the real reason for the success is that you take it very seriously. You're a, you're a good researcher and you're a good, you're a good performer too. Like you, you're reading your own stuff. You kind of, you kind of, to me, you embody why podcasting is better than, uh, other media at, at, at its best. It's because there's an authenticity in, in addition to the professionalism. You're not just a mannequin that was like... That would be hot, but but uh, <laughs> that was that was like that was carved out by the system's needs. So it's like, oh, he's really good at making people believe him. So he's cast behind this desk, and then these people that are good at writing things, and then these people are good at shooting things. You're a one-man team that like you're interested in this stuff, and then you you are who you are, and your personality like exudes. So we can trust you and listen to you talk about Loch Ness and vampires and werewolves and 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 magic uh, uh, beans. <laughs> And uh, we the, made... We, they're the magic fruit. <laughs> we, 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 we made friends online because I, because I tweeted that, uh, that after listening to your podcast a lot, and I'm going to have Aaron like read you so that people aren't familiar with him. I'm going to have him do a cold read of one of his lore intros openings. <laughs> which I just feel have a certain style to them and, and to the point where I, like, I, I, I tweeted... That after I make love to, to Cody, um, I, I, I like to just finish by saying, I'm Aaron Mankey. And, and let me say, <laughs> Cody has confirmed this is true. <laughs> and, and then you tweeted back and, and were like clearly unoffended by it. And, uh, right. and, and we became fast friends. We met out for drinks and, uh, and, uh, and we, like, we like each other's jibs. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, like, 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 yeah, I'm not good at, uh, at anything. Uh, like, um, uh. but but do you want to? Like, let's just give him a taste of this is this is this is Aaron doing a live cold read of kind of like what he does at the top of each of his episodes. You've got one pulled up. That's the text. And you, you, Jeff, you've got some of the music. I've got some of your music here. That's sweet. Yeah. Do, do you make want, sure make sure to eat that mic, brother. Yeah, get the mic right close. Do you uh, want, uh, this do you, is Boston. Do you, they don't fucking. Do you, do you want me to start? start Can I with get the music? a lapel mic, please, and a suit jacket, <laughs> and a glass of uh, Glenlivet Twenty One? Chablis. <laughs> yes. uh, do you want the music to begin? Please. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> On June twenty fourth, fourteen oh eight. A French court sentenced a murderer to death by execution. She had entered the home of a neighbor and found a four-month-old child inside, alone and unattended. Although she never disclosed her reason for doing so, she killed the child right there in the house. After her trial, she was moved to the prison to be held until her execution. The others who were imprisoned there most certainly jeered at her. They called her names. Yes, they were hardened criminals, but 
to kill a child. Even they were appalled. The prison, however, treated her with the same, as the same as those men charged. Charged her family the same daily rate for her meals. Equality was a rare thing for her, you see. On July 17th, she was guided to the platform and a rope was placed around her neck. A crowd was most likely gathered that day to watch the spectacle. Like the criminals inside the prison, they too had mocked her and shouted insults. And then, after the trap door snapped open, she plummeted to her death. It was over. History is full of these stories. A criminal goes to trial and justice wins the day. What was odd about that trial in 1408, though, was the suspect. Because she wasn't a local woman or even a relative of the child she killed. She wasn't even human, you see. She was a pig. Literally, a farm animal tried in the court of law and sentenced to be put to death and then executed on the gallows three weeks later. Say it. Say it. Better eight than never. <laughs> During the long history of criminal trials, spanning cultures and centuries, all manner of oddities have entered the courtroom. As unusual as it might sound to put livestock on trial, humans have been guilty of worse. You see, sometimes even the dead get to testify. I'm Aaron Mankey, and this is Harmontown. <laughs> equivalent of having like Skrillex up here, you know? <laughs> it's like, wow, he really does just do it that way. I thought you'd be like, well, I need 70 takes. Oh, ah, ah. Uh, yeah, I said, you paused and we thought you were going to say I'm Aaron Menke and you said better eight than never. <laughs> that wasn't in the original, was it? N no. Okay, all right. No. Well, just checking. Just because check, it would have worked there. Yeah, it that would have been great. It would have been yeah. great in there. I would have been okay no with that. no sense on that poster. Do you want me to go back and edit that audio? <laughs> would you please? For the old episode? Would you please? I, do you, do you, would do, you please? Do you think back in 1408 they were frugal enough and thrifty enough that they ate that pig, or do you, do you not eat a condemned peg, a pig? I'm going to guess they ate it. Yeah. I mean, I want very badly to be able to, 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 to do this, because I, I, like most fans of podcasts, like, we listen, we listen to you, and then we, like, I, I want to do, I want to do what you do, and I don't know if I, but I, and I've been thinking, like, well, Jeff has the music, and I want to try doing it, but, but, like, I don't know how to, like, like, uh, like, I just want to try one. You just, you just play the, play the music, and... Yeah. Uh, give me a. Will you give me give me a topic to give me a or what, or like? Give a, him give him some folklore to riff on. Yeah. I don't know if we're local enough for that. I do Salem witch trials. I would. Yeah. So then I have to. I, so what I've learned from you is I have to back up three three right. like. Boxes from Salem witch trials or even witches. <laughs> so, uh, okay, right. so. so we're going to start off by talking about the history of ventriloquists. Right, right, right. right and right, then yeah. we'll work our way up to. Yeah. yeah. All right, you ready? You yeah. ready then? Yeah. What? Here we go. In 1981, <laughs> Arnold Palmer was at the top of the charts. He loved music. But what he really loved was socks. Socks made of cotton. And Arnold Palmer could only buy those socks in one store. You see, cotton was scarce. And socks, being made from them, were scarcer. So when Arnold Palmer walked into the Sears that day, what he didn't know, well, is that he'd be starting on fire. 
The fluorescent lights, due to faulty wiring in the section above the men's socks, caught fire <laughs> and fell on his head, <laughs> bursting him into flames and ending the career of a celebrated musician. You see, America burns what it loves. <laughs> Whether it's Michael Jackson or a witch. Well, what is a witch? And where does a witch go if a witch doesn't know? <laughs> when I think about witches, I think about Salem, the capital of witches, but not a good place for them to live. You see, in Salem, as far back as 1492, <laughs> these witches, far from sailing the ocean blue, <laughs> were subjected to the opposite of oceans. Fire. The same fire that burnt Arnold Palmer and Michael Jackson and eventually, the Loch Ness Monster. But that cold day in 1492, Salem was about to learn that what goes around, burns around. I'm Aaron Mankey, and this is Lore. I have a couple follow-up questions. I, think I was about thinking that. of Robert Palmer, by the way. Robert Palmer would be this. Not that it matters. Um, Arnold, Arnold, Arnold Palmer. Palmer. People forget about the. Uh, not only was Arnie a great golfer, but he had he had some great hits in the early eighties. Simply 80s. irresistible. Remember that video where he's got the golf club and the girls with the lipstick. Arnold. Palmer. She's so fat. She got a bogey on the back nine. <laughs> She's so fine, there's iced tea in her lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, your, so your podcast, you, you like go, okay, so there's these monsters and stuff, and this is, this is how you get rid of them? I mean, is that part of it? <laughs> no. Like if I, like if I but, but come on. Like, like if, if a I, Dracula shows up. Yeah, if a Dracula showed up, you could say, well, actually, garlic doesn't work on Dracula. It only works on... Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not really the Neil deGrasse Tyson of, of folklore. That's not what I do. Who is, in your opinion, <laughs> today in the world? <laughs> no, no, like, but you know, uh, this, I'm, 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 I haven't heard of this until now, so I'm gonna check it out. Well, it's here's awesome. a, J, J, Rob, because you're not, you know, you're you're more of a, uh, you know, you're you're not Careful. as much of a dog. He's more of a visual guy. Uh, you'd be happy to know he's uh, he's working on his second season of the hit show Lore based on his podcast and that there's a season out. What is it, Amazon? Yeah, Amazon. You can watch it. Oh, okay, even you better. You can watch it come to life. And right. uh, Robert Patrick's in one. You remember him from The Terminator. Yeah. He's so stupid, you have to trick him into smart stuff. Robert Patrick? <laughs> Robert Patrick is stupid? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but Aaron, uh, is, are you from Boston? Is that why? No, no, I grew up in the Midwest. Okay. Yeah. Why, why, why do you have a relationship with the Wilbur? I remember because you saw that I was performing here, and you're like, hey, I'm going to be there. And I'm... The folks that run the Wilbur have a tour company for folks like us. Oh, okay. And they represent me in book, book venues. I played here a year and a half ago. Do you ever see the Blue Man Group here? <laughs> How would you get rid of a Blue Man? Pack your bags. <laughs> Well, all right, what what gets rid of a blue man? <laughs> you, you what's, have, the, what, what's the origin of the blue ma man? It, it's a, you, you make a circle of salt, right? And, I, and it stops them. Okay, like okay. Slugs. All right. Spencer, okay. will you do a lore intro about the blue man group? If it's bad, sure. Somebody help me out. Where'd it Let's go? Let's talk about immigration. Okay. 
I think it's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, it drives me nuts is when somebody will like they'll post like a picture and it'll go it'll be like a picture of a pretty white girl and it'll say like separated from her family when an immigrant shot her and you go like, okay like okay so you care about people so so let's uh, let's 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 pass a bunch of sweeping legislation to protect people I'm sure you're into all of those and then and then and then they go well it's contrary to what you might think. I'm not just some trailer trash. I do have opinions about it. I was like, why are we having a grown-up conversation that you crashed with your fucking photo of somebody saying, like, ooh, a brown person shot? Like, there's, like, pe there's like people just post memes, and then, and then they're, like, they're like, look at this, oogity boogity. And, and, you're, and it's like a dead rat they bring in from the backyard, and then you're supposed to dim the lights and pour some wine and talk to them like adults. Like, like, is, that, is that how you get rid of a blue man? Can no. you get a blue rent? No? no. Okay, but, no, but what? Keep looking. I, you're okay, but get what, this eventually. what could I get rid of with, with that spell? <laughs> I think I'm not understanding the show yet. But it's well. <laughs> still, it's not. It's about um, actual shit, you asshole. <laughs> the Blue Man Group exists. I've seen commercials. Yeah. So. So name something... Dickhead! That, name something that doesn't exist. Like, Telling him that I'm stupid with the Robert Patrick side mouth? You didn't think I saw that. You're talking into a microphone, you dipshit. <laughs> I'm glad I came. the most twisted attack on anyone ever. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> you know what? You deserve me, me being in your life. It couldn't have happened to a better person. So I found what it's like to be on Twitter right, right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you had you had you had a, you had a little dust up with Chris D'Elia, and you were uh, you you've you've been on, you've been active on Twitter, and you've been like uh, you know you're 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 Aaron Mankey, and 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 you're and you're and you're like you have your opinions, and you're like finding out what all of us are, which is like well, people might like your podcast because it's about werewolves, and they might also maybe vote differently from you or like have a different like like opinion, and then you like tweet something, and then people like pile on you, right? Like they go like, what the fuck, bro? My yeah. girlfriend and I tried to fuck, we fucked to your podcast, man. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about baby schwitz for? <laughs> Talk about werewolves on your Twitter. And then you're like, eat me, right? Yeah. Well, you know. In so many words. Right. Yeah. I better ate than ever. Right. <laughs> Probably, but you don't get on Twitter to become happy, right? Like you, we, we, we can recognize at least as a as a population that we don't get on Twitter to make ourselves happy. We're getting on Twitter to make ourselves unhappy. Like we never go like I'm so happy right now, I I I, I should be happier. I'm gonna get on Twitter. If you're happy, you forget to get on Twitter. If you're sad, you're like I'm so fucking sad. I don't know whether I should eat glass, uh, like 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 d eat a box of donuts. Uh, like, like, dip my head in turpentine or get on Twitter. And, like, Twitter's the closest thing you can do. Befriend your vending that machine. Mood. What's that? I said, or befriend a vending machine. Yeah, well, no, I mean, that was a joyous night. Like, I won't have you... <laughs> you guys are acting like I was... Descri I was happy last night. That's a, that's a new thing I learned from my, my personal trainer, Dave Klein, if you watch my Instagram workouts. Yep. Dave Klein has been on the show. You... Yep. He he told me, you know, he kind of blew my mind with this. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to practice this and seeing how it goes. He said, you know, love can be a weapon. <laughs> he didn't put it that way. He said, like, like you can you can you can choose to express love and be in a loving place as an act, actually as an assertion of your power. I'm paraphrasing him. It's like like like. Like it doesn't. We associate love with like acquiescence and and like oh I'm I, I have to break through past all of my needs to be in control and 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 not feel stupid and like all these things that society kind of like demands of us in the moment like like kind of like, it kinda like it, it's kind of incompatible with this idea we have about love which is that you're zen and you're open to everything and and you're even kind of weak on purpose and you're osmotically going to absorb everyone's point of view and stuff but there's this version of love where you can just be like 
I, I, I love everything because that gives me power. That makes me a good person and it gives me power <laughs> over everyone. <laughs> like, I, I, it, 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 it makes me a more evolved person. I can, you can choose to do it for kind of selfish reasons, to be like, I'm in love with what's going on right now because, yeah. because I'm better than people. Uh, I think that's fair. I mean, that seems like it slots in with the four agreements, honestly. It's, cer it's, cer it's certainly like, it's, it's very least like, you know, maybe it's not the best way to be taught about love, but it's certainly like maybe a rope into the pit when you're not feeling love at all. And you're like, like, oh man, I just want to like eat a rock right now. I don't want to love anything. And then somebody would be like, yeah, but you know, you, you know what love is? It's making everybody else eat your fucking love shit. You know, like you can't, like, it's like if I get off the elevator at Rick and Morty's offices and I come out and, my, and I'm feeling like I love being there, I'm gonna, everyone else is gonna be happier and do a, a better job. And like, like, like it's, it, it's high, it, it is strength and it is leadership. And it How is, How yeah, are you I mean, gonna do that? 70 episodes. I mean, uh, uh, how? By that, loving, by loving that, it. That's so, I love it. That's so many, damn, that's so many episodes. <laughs> 70. How many have you done so far? What's the answer? I have a question. What's the answer to your question? <laughs> What's a Rick and Mortis? No. Uh, I don't. Uh, you know, there's supposed to be an unspoken exchange of fandom here. Right? <laughs> um, no, so are, are you ready with the... You, so many yeah. episodes. We're, we're gonna have That's a lot of writing. Yeah, Spencer, what are you doing here? Spencer's going to do Why are you a, here? Are you writing right now? What's should that? You Why are you writing it? You should Why be writing it right now. I had to come... You haven't even started. We've been waiting how long? Months. Months? Right? I mean, come on. Come on, where is it? Where is it, Dan? Where is it? Dan, where's it? Where is it? What are you doing? You better start writing it. Are you gonna write one right now, Dan? God. If I have He'll to. Try. 70 episodes, get to work. Can we, can we pull up uh... Welcome to Notes. I can't wait to see that first porn page just open up. <laughs> this is Levy's laptop, he's asexual. Uh, <laughs> He's not asexual. He listens to Dave Matthews. Mm, not last night. <laughs> the only thing I, I hear is tour dates, believe me. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I mean, and also, you can be asexual. I admire you if you are. That's not, it's not an insult. It's actually, a, I think, uh, I, I, I envy you. I, like, I would like to be asexual. Would you like to be, are you asexual? <laughs> first, first, are you? <laughs> Second question, want to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's like an asexual thing? Like people get together at asexual bars and they're like, I don't need to have sex. Me neither. May as well then, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they have the best sex ever. Because they're like, this doesn't matter. I agree. It's like, that's how we feel about Krispy Kreme, right? Like there's nothing... Like, 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 they would be great. That would be the best sex. That's how sex should be, probably. I don't mean to, I don't want to trivialize it for romantics, though. Sex should be important to you if it's important to you. Is sex important to you, Aaron Mankey? When Let's you're done, do you say, I'm Aaron Mankey? <laughs> Everybody that's here tonight on a date, just please go home and fucking say that afterwards. <laughs> uh, I'm Aaron Mankey. And you may be carrying lore. <laughs> All right. All right. So I far, I love it. Look, can, can we enlarge that? Can we can, can we go full? Is it, is it as big as it gets? I can't. I don't know. Can, can you can, can you uh, up the font menu? size, man? Uh, Press that green. Press that green. Press the green. In your in your press that your green bar. button. A -A. <laughs> you let Aaron Minky tell me. A A A A. Right on your menu, on your toolbar. A A A A. No, oh. down in the window, oh. top of the screen. Oh. A A. Down this is why it's taking it's like so Alcoholics fucking long. Alcoholics Anonymous. I, oh, there. Okay. We'll 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 have evolved out of like yeah, well, a that's pinky a before this show is finished. Well, I don't know. I, look, I'm, there's been I, I, technical. I'm 
Dan just maximized the window. <laughs> fade in. Fade in. Uh, it's still, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh... Steve Levy. The, the make, it, make it big. All right. Hey, Steve, Steve, why don't... Explaining this wouldn't help. Bank account. Is this where Clippy Bank goes? account number. Vending machine password. Venmo. All right, for the listeners at home, uh, Steve Levy and, and Aaron Mankey and Dan are trying to uh, figure out how computers work. And Dan... <laughs> Dan is going to uh, oh, freestyle. Which template would you like? I think that. Uh, but I now think we're that talking. You could, you could, you could, Spencer. Steve just plugged in. He got word open. That whole ordeal was opening one file. D Dan, Dan, for the home listener, do you want me to narrate as you write or no? Or, if you want it to be a surprise, keep your eyes closed. <laughs> Interior, Rick's garage day. Rick is making science. Rick. Brackets scientifically. This should be some good burp. Science. Morty. Morty, 14, hot but doesn't know it enters. Morty. Hi, hi, oh, jeez, Rick. Are you, are you making more science? Rick. No, Morty. Morty. Are you lying? Rick. Does it, does it matter? Morty. You're just someone with, 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 with an empirical moral compass. Does anybody out there do a really good Rick or Marty impression? You're doing great. Toilet guy? Toilet maker, get up here. The toilet maker says he does. Check one, two. What's your name, toilet maker? Uh, crew. C crew. Crew, uh, give it up for crew. Crew, you're gonna narrate. Right. Woohoo! Uh, I do Morty. Does that? I don't do both. Okay, I'll do. Uh -oh. I'll, I'll do, do. Do we have a Rick out there? Does anyone do a Rick? Oh, you're too far away. All right, I'll, I'll do Rick. Okay, do, okay, do, do Morty. Oh, sorry. Um, wait, that's oh, Rick. I'm Morty. Okay, okay, Morty, you're trying to make words sound more important by by chaining ones that are longer than other ones together, and it's only going to result in a bunch of words. You may as well just accept your cosmic role as a dumbass. Oh, okay, Rick, whatever you say. Morty, you sound more like Mickey Mouse, to be quite honest with you. Jeff's going off the Oh, jeez, I hope there's no copyright infringement, Rick. Yeah, oh, boy. Oh, whoa, 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 come on. Sorry, sorry, Rob. Stick to the script. We're not paying you, we're paying him. I, I thought this was whose line? M Morty, are you okay? <laughs> Improvise! It's Rick, huh? Rick. Aren't you the guy from the audience that Dan Harmon <laughs> pointed at every, every time he, he talked about toilet making? Yes! <laughs> this episode's getting off to a pretty slow start, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> this, has got, this has gone off the rails, Morty. Then, Sinister. Do you want to see the rails, Morty? Oh, what? 
You want to see the rails, Morty? The Donnie Darko... The Donnie Darko guidelines. <laughs> that make everything we haven't done the things that we're already gonna do. Wow. This is, this is her Bon Jovi. Yes. Follow me. Or, or, or don't. You already have. Rick's, Rick walks into a thing and pushes a thing. <laughs> Justin usually deals with the visuals. A door opens inside a thing. Stairs are in it. <laughs> Back to dialogue, okay? It's what I'm good at, Morty. Yes, please, Rick. Oh, jeez, Rick. Take me down to the funky town. Rick. What? Funky town? Huh? It's a new uh, millennial euphemism for bathrooms. <laughs> M Morty, what the fuck? Oh, never mind. Come on. Down the stairs to the to the rails. <laughs> This, this, this Rick impression, this, this real number on your voice, Morty. Oh, geez, not mine. Yeah, I, I got a vocal No, 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 come on. I'm not gonna tell you again. Rick takes Morty downstairs. My voice is... Not 11! Not 11! Here. Spencer, I, I'm having vocal surgery in a few days. Do you want to take over as Rick? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's 9-11, Morty. <laughs> so? Oh, it's so it's my 9-11 alarm. Yeah, so it's important to never forget His it. His phone is ringing. It's my 9-11 alarm. That's sorry. Weird. Do you need to take that? No, it's, it's for 9-11, okay. Is sorry. it the toilet company? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> We could have used, we, we used that on 9-11. <laughs> okay, but does remembering it have to distract us from things we're already doing? No. Uh oh okay. Aaron Mankey, 30 is hot and knows it, steps from the shadows. Hello. Holy shit, Morty. It's Aaron Mankey. <laughs> or is it? <sighs> Breathe some water, sorts papers. <laughs> Identity has always been an awkward concept. <laughs> From the shores of Salem. In 1492. To the Boston Mall in 1982. Mankind, or should I say, some kind. has sought to answer one particular nagging question.
<laughs> Where did I get here from? Grammatical spell check. <laughs> Eats cracker. Crunch, crunch, crunch. How can I guarantee that a Dracula won't bury me alive? The answer has come in a variety of forms. From shoes, Tonka trucks, and tampons. But one theme continues to emerge on this winding road of mortality. I'm Aaron Mankey, and this is the Omega Protocol. Is that? That was a good, that was a good line read. Aaron Mankey turns into a moth man. <laughs> Run, Morty! I just wanted to make toilets. <laughs> All will be consumed by the flame I circle. Oh, I, that does actually make sense. I thought it was a typo, but no, that's good. Okay. You like the delivery? Was that good? Yeah. Aaron Mankey eats everyone. <laughs> Fade out. Oh. Let's hear for crew, everybody. Yeah. Crew on the morning. Crew. Woo. I don't think that's going to be. I don't think that's going to be riveting radio. <laughs> but it's going to be great television. So the season is 70 episodes long? Who I does like, that? I'm, I'm trying. Everyone keeps going, oh, so it'll be seven seasons. I'm like, no, welcome to 25 episodes a year and uh, early retirement. I will show you how bad a Rick and Morty can get. I'm writing one right now yeah, with my is... extra Iron Man suit at home. <laughs> This I'm is like, episode fuck eight. <laughs> I'll, I'll fuck up a Spider-Man from here. I don't care. I'm like training Spider-Man with one suit. All right. <laughs> you are, you are expecting... Marvel loyalists. <laughs> I just felt like Spider-Man deserves to not just become like an adjunct to the Iron Man uh, thing. I'd say, I'd say you could, you, could, you know, come on, Spider-Man. All right. Uh, I like. Uh, 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 all right, let's hear the blue, 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 blue man group. Oh shit! This is gonna be oh, blue God. man group lore intro by Spencer. <laughs> Mankind has been eating food for years, <laughs> decades, if we're honest, <laughs> and for most of that time, it hasn't been salted. <laughs> When John Wilkes Booth walked into the mall one day, he had no idea what he was about to add to the culinary, uh, culinary landscape. Spying a big crystalline rock, he needed to lick it, and lick it he did. Since then, salt has been commonplace at the dinner table across America and the world. But that made no difference to Margaret Cho as she left her house one morning, headed to the same mall. What she found was peculiar. <laughs> a corpse torn asunder, covered in blue markings, and surrounded by the remnants of a broken salt circle. No one knows what the first sighting of the Blue Man group was. And one doesn't have to, to fear. You see, things that are blue have a way 
of coming back around and things that aren't might just surprise you. <laughs> I'm Aaron Mankey, and this is Lore. Thank you. That's Thank a you good so lore. Much. That's a good lore. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I am a huge, I'm a huge fan. I love your stuff. <laughs> You've got the job. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, there's some overlap with dungeon mastering. No, I know, I, I seriously, like, the, 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 the real world take on folklore is very inspiring as someone who weaves folklore into fantasy, you know, narratives. I think it's a really uh, cool source of inspiration. Uh, I, I constantly hear from people that do D&D &D campaigns, and they take inspiration from the show to build stuff. Yeah. I, uh, I play D&D &D every week. Oh, nice. You, yes. Um, with racists. While we're on the topic, everyone, everyone roll for initiative do a pod. right now. Yeah. That's roll the new thing. Like Alt-right D&D is taking off, man. <laughs> yeah. um, and a, a couple of uh, campaigns ago, I was a lore bard. If oh, you can yeah. believe it, yeah. A lore bard? Yeah, if you're a bard, you can pick one of the colleges. I always College wanted of Valor, to be... College of Lore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lore bard. And one I, of the one, cutting words is one of the best spells. You just make fun of people the entire night. It's great. Yeah, you can kill someone by insulting them. Yes, it's amazing. I would hate to get insulted by Aaron Minky. Can you imagine? He'd go. Throughout history, pants have had one purpose: to cover or present the extremities below the abdomen. However, your pants appear to be entirely removed from that purpose, well, altogether. They look like raggedy-ass Kmart pants. <laughs> I'm Aaron Minky. <laughs> you burnt. <laughs> and this is Lore Barn. <laughs> I'm Aaron Minky, and those Converse are piss wipers. They used to call bad shit piss wipers when when I was a kid. You had to have like these big, crazy. Your shoes had to be like Reaganomic, fucking like <laughs> Nike things that had like pumps and and Velcro and zippers. And Michael Jackson had to be in one of the laces. <laughs> um, and uh, if you had anything lesser than that, like something that that you know more recently would be really nice shoes that people like. <laughs> like they're like, like those can like canvas all-stars. They were called piss wipers because they kind of turned yellow over time. Piss wipers. Were they, so, were, they were they wicked piss wipers? Wicked piss wipers. <laughs> you got wicked <laughs> retarded piss wipers. How do you like them apples? I like them just fine. From the seas of Boston Bay to the to the hotel that I'm staying in. <laughs> That's the two locations I know. <laughs> the home of Quincy Jones. Go to Little Italy, eat a pie. Go to see a lantern in the sky, old timey lanterns. To if by sea. I don't know what I'm doing. It's, a, it's the huh? jingle for the Boston Tourism Board. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Come check out our fancy streets and see where Fallout see 3 many, happened. See, see, <laughs> see how many things... <laughs> That's what I was most excited about. I'm like, this is where Fallout 3 is. Dan. Or Fallout 4. four, Fallout four. four. Wow. He, did, he played it. He actually played it. You did. You played Fallout 4. Or no, wait. Fallout 4 was New Vegas, I thought. No, No, Fallout New Vegas was after Fallout oh, okay, 3, sorry, but before sorry. Fallout 4. All right, I'm sorry. He well, definitely played it. I I'm remember being annoyed. I'm very happy that you guys are that upset about it, because that makes you my kind. Dan, you, uh, you said you were going to get political tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, let me. I want to get this straight, though. It's like Fallout 3 was like the big one with the... Yeah. And the co -op. And then, and then, and then, then Fallout New Vegas. And then Fallout New Vegas, which was not a number, it was just Fallout New yeah, Vegas. It was like an expansion. And or so something. then Fallout 4. Boston. Boston. No, oh, okay. Got it. That's why I get confused. You can do, see do, why I get confused. Get to go down, like, yeah. Do you get to go down the Liberty Trail and kick ass? Or what, what, yeah, you follow the Liberty Trail. That's a thing. Uh, Dan, from your knowledge of, uh, of Fallout 4, how many stops do you think, if you were a true guy, you could name on the Liberty Trail? <laughs> no, I no, I, 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 the place where you fight the big giant and you hide in the uh, cargo bin. Oh uh, yeah, the super mutants hideout. Yeah. The, 
What? What? These guys. <laughs> I I appreciate Wah! the effort. <laughs> He's communicating with them. Did you hear? <laughs> it's amazing. Like, I like to just think that they love all video games this much. And if we were like Overwatch, they'd be like, Tracer! Oh my god! Like, they just love video games. Yeah. Yeah, see? I would, I would, yes, I, I would have been equally unsurprised though if you guys hated Fallout 4 because it was like that's that's a bullshit reproduction of our historical <laughs> district. <laughs> There's no fish monster yeah. in the park, <laughs> and if there was, you certainly wouldn't have that many health packs yeah. around it. He wouldn't eat illegal seafood. He would have gotten a Union Oyster House. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, what 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 what, how, what have we done so far? Let's a <laughs> lot. We've covered a we lot of ground. We finished half of the, the season of, of Rick and Morty. <laughs> right. We've done a, a bunch of episodes of Lore. Yeah. Blue the Blue Man Rap. The Blue Man Rap. That's still to come. Don't worry. Uh, I'd like to bring the word cockamamie back a little bit. Like, right. Oh, they're on oh, board. Here's a thought. A great way to make me less of an elitist would be to show me how much better an anonymous horde would be at running my fucking life or kill me. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, I'm an elitist. I don't like. Oh yeah, I think I'm better than a bunch of people I don't know. Who the fuck do you think I want to run my life? A bunch of people I don't know. Which? All right. I think the audience. Of course, you guys wouldn't be into that. You're a bunch of people I don't know. Yeah. You're biased. <laughs> but each one of you as an individual is a fucking elitist, and you're very near the coast. You're basically coastal elites. Whoa. I'm Aaron Mankey. <laughs> You burnt. The elusive libtard is a creature <laughs> referred to in the forests and catacombs of almost every urban city throughout history. <laughs> As opposed to not urban cities, the libtard seems to manifest itself in times and places where, well, people don't have much going on. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln couldn't have expected his boots to start talking to him. But that's exactly what they did on the morning of October 11th, 1928. <laughs> Returning to his home, having absconded with the Lindbergh baby, a weary Lincoln placed the child down on the table, expecting it, perhaps justifiably, to fly. only to watch it die. <laughs> Abe Lincoln would return that baby to the wooded edges outside the Lindbergh estate, but in so doing, he would start a bit of a dilemma among <laughs> the rural non-elites. You see, <laughs> Abe Lincoln was Above all, a libtard. <laughs> and he had now killed the baby of perhaps one of the most celebrated blue collar heroes. <laughs> a man who single handedly flew from Paris to New York, thereby proving that we didn't need the former. <laughs> when Johnny Lindbergh was buried in those woods, his fractured cranium oozing baby brains. I'm sorry. I, Someone I heard said a guy, Jesus. A guy went, Jesus. Uh, yeah, I know. I look. You, try being me. Well, I, I, I think, like this. Weren't you? I thought you were about to say chocolate and candies, which sure. wouldn't have been offensive at all. Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I, I, I'm trying to wrap it up. Tonight's lore has been brought to you by the cool, refreshing taste of baby Schwitz. <laughs> By the way, it's time to crack open the baby sweat. Lore is brought to you with limited commercial interruption. <laughs> However, you will be hearing some inline branded content. Uh, 
I'm Aaron Budweiser. <laughs> and this is the cold, clear taste of fully croissant beer. I don't know. I, I, uh, uh, Aaron Menke, uh, didn't you... Uh, no, nah, never mind. Uh, Aaron Menke, what, why do you like lore? Not the, not the, not the production, the, the thing that, made, that you stole the title from. The, the, the like lore. The why do you like lore? The noun. We know why you like lore. Right. Because because you own it. Yeah. Why do you like lore? Why do you like it so much that you own it? Who now? doesn't like creepy stories, right? Especially ones that are real. Yeah. 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 But you could. But you could easily. There's a million podcast. You could. You could just be like, hey, here's some like unresearched like fucking urban legends about uh, werewolves and things. But you. You. You like the idea that the truth is that this stuff might be that our world might be more magical. Or do you like the fact that we shouldn't even be calling it magic? It should just be called normal because light, real life is fucking creepy. Good question. I'm like fucking wow. Bob Costas. Except you don't look like a little boy. <laughs> yeah. Bob Costas looks like a little boy. All right. Um, I just I, knew I can't say Charlie Rose anymore. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can't. Yeah, people are monsters. What are we, what are we talking about? Right. right. Is, in the, is that, like, was that one of your guiding themes that you wanted to express through the podcast, or did you find that after your research? Because that is a very, that's, like, the main theme in, in your stuff, right, is that it's actually humans? I, yeah, it's, it's become that. I, originally, it was... Wow, check out this creepy stuff I found out about this village that dug up one of their ladies and cut her heart out and made a tonic out of it, and then they drank it. Well, like the, the one that I heard, Aaron. The, the one Rhode Island. What, what do you call it? Homunculus? <laughs> Homunculus? Homunculus. Yeah, yeah, and like there, there was no magic to that. It's actual experiments on trying to create, like, raise the dead. It's, it's like, it's, it's actual things that people actually did. It's not, it's not mythical it's like these oh, are no, people did this these they, are court yeah. cases that actually happened yeah yeah get yourself a, a dried gourd and fill it with some blood and some semen and maybe some ground bones and then shove it up a horse's womb and wait for you and then crack <laughs> open a nice cool baby schwitz <laughs> as baby schwitz.com slash lore <laughs> offer code lore <laughs> get a gourd fill it with blood and semen yeah yep. And sh and put it in a horse. So That's been done because yeah. they're. I mean, well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't no, it make makes sense. sense. But we only know it doesn't make sense because we're standing on the shoulders of scientists. Yeah, exactly. And actually, that would be science at a certain point because you'd be like, well, I f other things have blood and semen in them, right. and then a baby comes out. So you're like, how about if I put blood and semen in a gourd? It's kind of there's a misogynistic underpinning there, right? It's like it's like 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 men going like, "Come on, we got we got to be able to do this alone." It's 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 they they keep pulling this out in every argument, right? Like 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 without me, people like you wouldn't exist. I just got to be able to like wave something at her face and go, "I could come in a gourd." Yeah, I, I mean, could make a horse gourd. I haven't seen it written yet, but we could make the argument that the alchemists were like the first incels, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're man. like they're definitely hacking and trolling and like well what if lead was gold basically I mean well, her emails uh, look, there, was, there, was a, there was an alchemist who believed he could take urine and distill it into gold because you know they're both yellow yeah right so right. so he filled his basement with buckets of his own piss <laughs> Do you want to riff this? Can we go to the... No, give no. Up? Come on. Can <laughs> you... Can you, know, do, you want to do one? Come on. Come on. I want to hear what it sounds like when you do our impression. When I, when of, I do our, Dan Harmon? When you, us doing you. Can you try... Just try one. Do the... Do, maybe do, do buckets of urine or whatever you want. All right. You want me to give you something else? That's or? my favorite Bob Dylan song. What about the chupacabra? <laughs> Wait, you gotta play. Well, get, play, get him with the music. That's that's his spirit. Like that's what he needs. In 1121, Johannes von Fuckingface wanted to make gold. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they did. They wanted to make gold. That's right. They did. It's true. I'm sorry for that's the secret. <laughs> Add a little truth. <laughs> So he bought himself five dozen buckets. <laughs> Using an ancient tome, he lined the buckets up in his basement in a nice grid. And then he peed in them. 
It smelled. He had asparagus that night, but that's what happens. But six weeks later, that urine had evaporated and left a sticky yellow residue. <laughs> Sadly, it didn't turn into gold, but that cologne kept the ladies away for decades. I'm Aaron Mankey, and this is somehow <laughs> <the one. laughs> it's like, You pulled out. You pulled out. It's good. I mean, you've got the weapon that it is your real voice, so you can, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's just fun to listen to it. All right, well, anyways. Uh, so what, 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 what we, 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 these people paid a lot of, they paid top dollar, like, like this, especially yeah. toilet, toilet, on a toilet maker's salary? <laughs> the money these people paid tonight, like, they're definitely entitled to D&D, &D, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Let's bring out Steve Levy, everybody. Steve Levy. Was trying to accommodate. Aaron, you gonna stay around with it? You wanna stick around with us? Play a little D D with us maybe? Sure. Alright. You could be Barony Mac. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Aaron, uh, would you stay and play the character of, of Barony Mac? He's a bear that was uh, brought into Of existence. course I would. Okay. Because good things come in bears. Yes, oh, they do. Yeah. Oh damn. In 1967, a bear was found unconscious, <laughs> filled with semen. <laughs> its lungs collapsed from crying for help. <laughs> All right, so well, I don't know if you guys are. I don't know. I don't know where our boundaries are, but I, I, I keep every time every time we brush up against each other, I find myself respecting you guys more. <laughs> I haven't, I, I have only, every time you guys are like, ah, or boo, you should get that right. I'm like, these guys are good people. <laughs> like, I'd say it's, it's, it's good to have that much curation of the Fallout franchise. It's, it's, it's good to take civic pride. I tell you, like, like I, I, I really, I, I want to impart that to you. I'm leaving improved. I'm sorry I soiled you tonight. <laughs> I do like you. <laughs> the, the, it doesn't sound the same as it does in your skull. That's all I can tell you. Like it's to you, it sounds like crystal clear. And up, up here, it's just. All right, now, Spencer, uh, 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 if, for those of you who are up to date on it, we we found Patchen's gem last time, which might have. Yeah. Yeah, we did. You want a drink? Do you want vodka? The uh, the church militant of the uh, of the silver flame. Uh, we finally did something right. So Spencer, uh, you, you t uh, we might be embarking on a new uh, on a new journey, possibly. Mm -hmm. All right. We might just. All right. So uh, we got. I, I'm uh, I'm t Chad the fire liker. We got Gary Shambling the shambling man. We got. Okay. We got diarrhea junior, and uh, you're going to be a, you're a talking sentient bear. I mean, all bears are probably sentient, but uh, you're a talking sentient bear. And uh, your name is Barney Mac. That one, the green one's for Rob. Barney Mac. And yeah. One. Say, yeah, you don't get one, unfortunately. You have bear powers, and uh, <laughs> if you want to do stuff, you know. Didn't what, Barney Mac get some extra feat or power last time? Or am I, am, What's my AC? Uh, 17. Okay. Uh, I mean, am I wearing armor? Uh, no. Okay. But uh, yeah, Bernie, Barney Mac, or uh, J J James Adomian called him Ursine Wells. Something like that. Hello. I don't know. Um, so what's up? Okay. Hey guys, how's it going? Great. Yay. Awesome. Last time on Harmon Town. Our heroes. Where were they? They were in that town. Dornester. Dornester on the quest for Patchen's gem. They tried not very hard. They gave up easily, and then DJ went back at it and got captured. Sensing imminent defeat, our heroes leapt into action and went to rescue DJ, and they found a fight. Oh, they fought. Jeff turned into a tree. A bear showed up. A dwarf with a wiffle ball teleported people outside of the building. After all was said and done, they had a hostage. They 
interrogated the hostage, and that led them to Boykin Hodge's pig farm. At the farm, our heroes were interrogated by the mute Boykin Hodge, and with his help, they found the stable they were looking for, and the gem that was Patchen's. But then they were attacked by that very same man who turned out to be a vampire. He was easily killed. Uh, what'll happen next? Find out now on Harmon Time. Okay, sorry everybody. Um, so you're in Boykin Hodge's pig stables. You uh, just killed him and he exploded into dust and skeletons after being staked by uh, Gary Shambling's fingers. Dust and skeletons. He exploded into. Yeah, multiple. Multiple dusts. Mm -hmm. I collected the dusts and put it in my oh, glass yeah, jar. Oh yeah, he put it in the jar. Thank you very much, DJ. That's very nice. Okay. Does you anyone... know, before, sorry. No, you go. Thank you. That's not sarcasm. You know, before. But that was. Before killing this vampire, I was having second thoughts about whether or not we were good or bad people. And, you know, I'm a monster, but, you know, I'm also a decent person. So I, you know, but we did some good work here, or pretty much just me, but I mean, there was a good things here because this vampire probably would have hurt some other people and creating more vampires, which would hurt other people. So you're welcome. I'm gonna stick around, I'm thinking. No, who, stick around. Who, 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 who's currently holding the gem? Do you have it, Carlos? Let's say Carlos, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah we were thinking about putting it in uh, Barony Max, but, but uh, because-, because I, who, should, I should hold it because I killed the vampire, so just- I support that. Thank you. <laughs> to him. Thank you, Bear. You know, they say, they say if you take a gem and you put some blood and some jizz on it, you put it up a bear's ass. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they say, I just- uh, Yeah. yeah. I, uh, Great. Give it to him. I am gonna hold on to it. Well, but you didn't kill, kill a vampire. No, you know he, he's kind of the George for part of our A team. As, as I say, we let him like. Let him I just think I just you're an outlier. <laughs> an outlier. I don't know what. what? All right, here's the gym. No, no. You... Thank you. <laughs> but it's not a. <laughs> it's you understand. It's not for comedy. It's like we've been looking for it for a long time. What do you? Why would it be for comedy if we've been? I just put it in my leaf. I know it's just not a bit. Like I don't. You it's seem not, to be made of bits. Like I, I don't know. Like I'm giving a gem to a guy that's like made of bits. Bits of 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 comedy. I, I don't know. I did, do. You even have pockets? Like 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 you're you're like. A, I'm I'm a shambling mound. I have pockets of stuff all yeah, over the so place. Yeah. So it's like falling off of you. Okay. Like, fine. I, here. If, if, if no, autumn no, comes, does the no, gym? No. Give it here. Take it. What's take in it. your pockets? Take it. What's in your pockets? No. Wait. <laughs> take it. Take it back. Should you take no, it back? No. Okay. See, I don't want it. Uh, Fine. It's on the ground. Great. I pick because it up it's... and put it in my glass jar. Okay. Aaron, is this how you play D and D? This is how you do it? Well, there's always the one guy who picks everything up and puts it in the glass jar. So and the audience and everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So do we need to? I mean, I, I wait. To, what's I'll... in your pockets? Thank you. Leaves. More leaves. How many pockets of leaves do you have? I, all of them. I don't know. I, I don't know. Aren't, aren't you mean? just a big pocket of leaves? Uh, yeah. Why, so why do you have pockets of leaves? <laughs> what mean are you? what? Okay. You know, I, uh, we're, we're, let's just move on from this. He's got it. I thought I, you know, I thought, uh, you know, you appreciated what I did, but it, you didn't. So it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't have to appreciate. No, we need things. to. Do we need to find Patchens and return this gem to Patchens? What a great question. <laughs> Why were you finding Patchens, Jim? Do you guys remember? Well, because we felt guilty because we got waylaid by bandits on the road uh, and they took Patchens' gem. Right, and so you're getting it for him. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. We, have so to, we have to get this back to Patchens. Well, that's up to you, but yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean. 
All right, let's 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 go find Patchens. Uh, okay, so last time you saw Patchens, he was in the town before it caught fire. <laughs> All right, let's let's go, let's go back to town. It's probably the fire's probably out by now. It's not. You can see it from the farm, but it's still going. <laughs> Mm. All right, well, let's, let, let's, go, let's go sneak into town. There's probably a big commotion going on. How did the fire start? Wait, do we have any enemies that are still outstanding? Well, the whole town, yeah. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's sort of like, it's, I mean, they're, okay, they're so, dealing with shit. All right, so should we just let that sort itself out? Yeah, and, I don't know. Sometimes I hear true crime podcasts where it's like, you know, someone disappears on 910, and then it's like, you know, like, like it's, it's, it's part of the fucking thing. It's like then 9-11 happened, and then oh. like... I'm saying, like, they're undergoing a thing in that town right now where we could, they, we could probably relax the law a little bit. Like, we don't, like, Are you, are you goes. saying we go back or we don't go back? I'm saying we go, we back. go back. I'm saying, like, we yeah, go we, back. We, we we unafraid, back. no need for disguises. I'm pretty sure right. people right. have their hands full. I feel comfort. Okay. Com- okay, cool. Com- let's, 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 let's just, let's just walk like, grab to a couple town. TVs on our way in. Yeah, yeah. How far away is the town? Can we see? Um, you're technically in the town. You're just in the, like the farming. So area. we're already here. Yeah, but it's like the fire is on the other side of the town. So that's why you can see it, and you're not like in a fire right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, let's go walk in and start our, our patchens hunt. Yeah. Okay. Just look around for him. Yeah. Or shamble around for him. Thank you. <laughs> Don't you have a little song that you that you sing when you shamble? I'm Gary. Shambling mound, I'm shambling through this side of town. It's on fire. <laughs> All right, so we're walking through the town, Spencer. Let's go ahead. All right. Shambling on the shambling. You're walking through the town, and most of the people aren't around. It's it's kind of night, and uh, so it's like late night. But everyone, you, you can hear a commotion coming from the fire. It seems like everyone's working together to try to put out the fire. Hey, right. put out fire. Are they doing an okay job? Um, you can't quite see them because you're still like there's rows of houses and buildings that are interposing your. Why don't view. we go act like let's go lend a hand? Let's let's, let's like play ball with these people. Th- okay. No, right. no, or what? What's your, it's, I a just, little, it's a little sociopathic. We I, could I, be the town's heroes. <laughs> town's on fire. Okay, I mean, I, we could win back their favor. Excuse me. All right. Well, mm-hmm. maybe it's a good way to look for patches. How are they putting? How are they putting out the fire with like sand? You or? can't see because you're not. Let's over. go check it out. Does the yeah. town have a well? Yeah, it has a right. well. I'm going to run to the well and look for a bucket. Okay. You run to the well and there's no buckets. There's a whole, like, what do you call it, like a citizen's ladder. They're, they're stationed from the well all yeah. the way to the fire, and they're very engaged in passing water. Can I help? Oh, yeah. They, uh, they look at you and, and wave you over and immediately insinuate you into their line. So, so they're, they're, this town is... Co- this, it's, it's such a crisis that they're okay with a, a bear coming in. <laughs> no, Bernie Mac... Like any oh. port in a storm. <laughs> Just to be... Bernie Mac is a fixture around town. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. He's yeah. like a town mascot. Could you bear some more help? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's laughing. They're fucking loving this <laughs> shit. It. Okay. Yeah, he's the, but he's not the bear that was in charge of fire prevention, right? Because no, okay. <laughs> no different bear. Uh, Wait, no, because, because, because if Smokey the bear showed up to like help put out a fire, I'd be like, "Fuck you! Where were you? This shouldn't have happened." <laughs> Am I, am I immune to fire, Spencer, because I have all these fire things? You have some resistance. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I, I, maybe I can put my fire abilities to use here. Yeah, I mean... You fight fire with fire. That is what started the fire. Right, right. <laughs> I've heard that extent. Okay, um, I go up, I, I go, everybody, just everybody, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. I, I walk up and I say, uh, I don't, I'm not a big scientist, I work for the church of the Silver Flame. Uh, but I, I go up to a, a building on fire and I shoot fire in a ring around the fire to <laughs> consume what? the oxygen around it and smother the fire. Uh, what spell is that? It's Backdraft. A, uh, <laughs> Produce flame. Produce flame. Not enough fire. Not you enough can try fire. that. Okay, hang on. Give me... God damn it. Uh, can, so... Uh, can he control the fire with his powers? Produce flame... No, I mean a little tiny bit. Like, control fire is a different spell if I understand. Do you have control? Okay, I, I do this. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of a trick. Uh-huh. Um, I do produce flames. So I have, a, I have a fireball. I can create a fireball in my hand, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I go. So I, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get rid of this fire my way. And I go in and I get close to the fire and then produce a flame and then run, run off with it and throw it down, <laughs> down the well. <laughs> you don't even <laughs> care about the actual. <laughs> like, I keep, I keep running back and forth and just like, 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 like I, I, I'm, I'm digging a hole. He's, he's a centrist. 
Right. That's what they call him, right? Yeah. yeah. Donut. <laughs> um, you're almost immediately recognized as the guy who started the fire. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> what What happens? What are they saying? Um, they start pointing you out because you're kind of running fast, and they're all very busy, so... But you start to notice people who aren't involved in firefighting start to cluster and accumulate around you. I quietly walk backward away from him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The only person with the, with the rapport with the town exits the situation. <laughs> I think that's a smart move. All right. So, yeah, it looks like people are sizing you up maybe to, uh, like, attack you or, like, to call the police or something. Oh, it is in these times of trial by fire that we must consult the Silver Flame's teachings on the matter. For non-Silver Flame is always the result of friction. And friction comes from fear of fire, such that fire will consume the earth if the Silver Flame is not acquiesced to. And what is the Silver Flame but love? Acceptance, acquiescence, water even is more f silver flamey than orange flamey. I uh, I sneak to the back of the crowd while while he's talking, and I go. That sounds like a pretty good idea. <laughs> I like what he's saying. <laughs> Give him a All chance right. to talk. You uh, you're a great distraction. And everyone turns to look at you because you're a giant monster trying to like pretend to be various nondescript people. It doesn't mean I, I no don't believe No matter your what... neighbor, whoever you live near, be they bear or shambling mound or human or out of towner or a mischievous darting flame wizard person. <laughs> All of us must work together. In a war worth fighting, you will find yourself shoulder to shoulder with those you mistrust, or else the war is no war at all. For it is the real orange flame that we must put out now with love and accepting everyone absolutely unconditionally. <laughs> fire's the real enemy. Fire's the real enemy. Fire's if, the real if enemy. If something's not actively on fire, it's not worth paying attention to. <laughs> at this particular time, your other conflicts will keep. You could, you could jump on somebody and say, hey, you offended me, that was microaggressive, after we beat these Nazis. <laughs> There's a town on fire. Water it. Water, water the fire. Water it. Water, water it. it. Fire. Fight fire water. with water. Water. That, isn't that, that seems like the opposite of what you were saying up till that point. Uh, I may have digressed. Okay. Uh, 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 as Carlos was giving that speech, I'm, I'm sneaking around the crowd trying to see if I can find patchins in the crowd. All right. Um, you're still pretty recognizable. So, I, I, I'm also looking around, though, and everybody likes me. So Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's loving it. To create a distraction, I go to the center of everybody. I throw my shield down, kick out my sword, and just start doing the craziest <laughs> fucking dance I could think of. There are now five distractions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that guy dance. How about a sixth? Ooh you hear the pounding of hoofbeats on pavement, the familiar sound of a horse with a rider, and uh, on that horse you hear a voice ring out, a familiar voice from a grizzled old man. Oh. This is what happens to those who spurn the flame's light. It's Geffen. He's wearing brown armor. It's Geffen. And he's wielding a big flaming mace, and he's bashing it into wooden structures and setting fires. What? Dungeons and Dragons fans will remember Geffen from episode 241, Excelsior. Re refresh my memory on Geffen. He's just a guy you know. Okay. Is he, is he friend or foe? He's, uh, he's he, a friend generally. He okay. feels like he toes the line, though. Oh, doesn't it? <laughs> Was but, he friends with Patchens? No, he doesn't. He knows who Patchens is. But anyway, he's like lighting more fires and he, uh, he rides his horse through the line of volunteer firemen and smashes one in the head with a well, flaming mace. Oh, okay. Geffen, why? All this right. is what happens to those who spurn the flame's light. All right, all right, different Dan, approach. Dan, you flash back to a moment on your prior campaign of the Eldine Reaches when you and Geffen were also lighting villages on fire. <laughs> but now you feel worse about it <laughs> because like it seems fucked up like in the present. God. Vietnam! 
Uh, yeah. Uh, shit. This is like what you used to be doing, but, you know, it was a good thing when you were doing it back right. then, and now it's like you don't like that it's happening. All right. Hey, Geffen. You, Come on. <laughs> I heard you preaching. Is that not what you were doing? You wanted more fire? No. Fuck. He rides off. You were doing that because of... No, no, he doesn't. Sorry, he doesn't. He doesn't ride off. That's funny. Is he really doing it because of me? Well, yeah, because, you know, I, you might not remember this about your character, but you used to be, like, this fucked up guy who did a lot of shitty shit. I still am. Yeah. And so, like... No, he's so, like, this guy was a partner in crime, you know? He's, like, your, your foil, right. maybe? I don't know. But I, you know, I, I, but I was trying to make a distinction between the real fire, you know, and the silver flame, which is actually not real fire. Mm. Well, know? it is. So the fire is very real. It's in Flanky. I know the fire is very real, but the, the kind that needs to be put out is not the kind that right. you okay. use to put it out, which is the flame of faith. I just I'm, I'm tr I was trying to split a hair to get my friends from being arrested, and uh, Geffen uh, bad time for the for the Geffer. <laughs> uh, Ge Ge Geffen, uh, uh, dial it back. <laughs> well, now he rides off. Okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry. That's no need to apologize. I, I, weird. What a weird. Yeah, I call out. Because now the jig is up anyway. Uh, I, I call out, Patchens! <laughs> All right, you hear Actually, no response. maybe we did commit to... Now I'm thinking, well, gee, hmm? what am I... Yeah, why am I trying to be a good person? This is well, what I, I, thought, I thought you said we were the good guys. Well, I, maybe that's, like, not what this town deserves. Huh? <laughs> and it seems like everything we do, we end up being the bad guys. Okay. I just, I'm just starting to think I'm remembering my previous life with Geffen, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, actually, we were good at one thing. <laughs> Burning towns and... Murdering people. Making people understand that it was God that was doing it to them. So we should, instead of trying to put the fire out, uh, we should fight put the fire, fire with fire. Uh, uh, on. Okay. I like fire. Uh. He said he likes it. He doesn't say he lights it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm still looking. I mean, no, are you I, applying I as a dungeon Pat master? Have I had a change of heart, or are you just saying... That was my understanding, is that you met, like, Steve and Jeff, and right. you were like, we're, we, this is not what the church is for. Okay. I'm the right person, right. and I'm going to change the church okay. from the inside. Okay, well, that's cool. That's an arc. I mean, that's why... So then the, I hope the, so. That's the, the, fact, the fact that we keep doing this is, is fine. It's forgivable. And it's actually just admirable that I don't want to do it anymore. Did That's Geffen cool. really ride off? Yeah, I mean, he seemed kind of embarrassed, but also, like, he really enjoyed it and was kind of like, he looked bad in front of you by, like, doing the wrong thing, but he thought it was the right, you know? Does he really respect me that much? No, he just thought that uh, it was killing time. Oh. And he really bases that on me? Like, well, like, he heard you preaching. He might not yeah. have heard you. He might have heard you about as good as I was listening. Hmm. Which, uh, which I apparently misinterpreted some of your words and <laughs> saw you were uh, inciting violence. Wait, but you, but, you, but you also thought that I was, my arc was that I was becoming better, that I wanted to be better, so then didn't you think it was odd that I was preaching to burn the town? Um, that's what it seemed like, but I thought you were being a distraction. Like, I don't, no. didn't think you were earnest about it. You were just, like, trying to be distracting. But I didn't get that you wanted to burn the town down. You he wanted was talking to... about how great fire was. That's you, wanted what... to, he, you wanted to you would purify it with the, with the fire of righteousness. I'm not saying that I heard him accurately. Okay, I'm right. saying I, I thought, didn't hear him. I thought, I, thought, I thought you were about to get lynched, and then he was coming in to, dis and to stop it. I was saying, him. you know what real fire would do? Fire would fight fire and understand right. that people that look like they started the fire are probably just uh, firefighters. Right. So that's what happened 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably 15 minutes ago. Probably I have a question. Minutes. Yeah. Can we attack something? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. You can cool. attack the people. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, there's no real monsters. I attack these waffles. Patches! Where is Patches? Yeah, Patchen's not around. God damn it. Has are anyone seen Patchen? Are there any buildings not on fire? Uh, yeah, Shrove's house. Let's go there. Well, let's go check inside. Yeah. The All Bear right. and Shambling Mound go to Shrove's house. You go to Shrove's house. It's empty. No one's home. I just want to hang Doors behind locked. and say, my brothers and sisters that aren't fighting the fire, I am on a quest for the Church of the Silver Flame. Has anyone seen Patchen's? God. 
no one's really paying too close attention to you. They're like attending to the wounded and dead and fighting of a fire. Of the many sins that people can commit against the silver flame is being distracted. One must focus on what's important. I, Geffen I, comes back. I try to get... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> is Geffen is like my Tyler Durden. He just shows up. And... <laughs> hey, hey, Carlos, you want their attention? You want their attention? I, yes. Do you want, I mean... I, yeah, 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 No, no, I don't... I mean, on a human level, like, what are you planning to do? Are we low on time, to... by the way? Or are we going to get kicked off stage? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have like two minutes. The, okay, the, sorry, the, everybody. The, 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 the red coats come at... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we like doing the show. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're having a great time. You would eventually become as bored as us, believe me. I mean, Wait, we no, so, we're having fun. So Geffen's back? No, no, that was a good joke. That was a great joke. <laughs> All right, what, 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 why? No, 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 what are you trying to... You, I just wanted to find out where Patchens is. Yeah, me too. Uh, Patchens! But Patchens! He's not, he, but he's not... He's, he's not... <laughs> I want to okay, him. he's not okay. here. Patchens! Bertie Mac I was, and I... I thought I would engage them and Bertie make it a religious Bertie Mac and I thing. are looking through Shrub's house. We're looking for anything that will put out fire. I'm a cleric, so I thought... Water... Would, like, be religious and ask sand. for patches. Sand. sand. So but he a, said... But he said fire that, that, that they're not going to pay attention to you because they're too busy putting the fire right. out. I found that out. Do we find anything? You find a bag that looks like it has water symbols on it. A bag? Yeah, like okay. a sack. Hey, Ooh. hey, Bernie. Bag with water symbols on it. What do you think? It's a bag of water. Okay, let's go. ta -da -da. I ride Bernie Mac... Uh, into back to town, waving this bag with water symbols on it, going, ah, 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 ah. This, this is the Breeders. This is the Breeders album. <laughs> uh, and... Okay, so... So you're flailing around the bag and, like, drops of water and, like, water's spilling out of it like it's, like, a full bucket or something. And I go, wow, hey, Bernie, I'm going to start spinning it. Do you think you could run in a circle? Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> let's give it a shot. I start so whipping it around. we're galloping around, right? Yeah, around the fire. And right. And I'm wh whipping it around. Well, you know what, let's pick a building, just one building first and try you're, it. You're, you're the... steering, man. Yeah, I'm whipping. We're just gonna... <laughs> I'm whipping right. it around. I'm whipping it around. Right. And we're doing, percentage-wise, how good of a job? Uh, not great. The bag is, like, tied off, and so it's not really... It's like, the oh, okay, yeah. oh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like, yeah. I untie the bag, and then we start again. Running right. around, Run, building around of your building. choice. And you're waving Whipping it. it around now yep. with the bag untied with right. the symbols on it, okay? It's crazy magic. It's like you're holding the fullest bucket everywhere, and every yeah. motion just splashes uh, hordes of water. Uh, uh, Join it. Join it. Uh, around. Uh, 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 uh. How many, like, like <sighs> let's say we do laps? 30 laps. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Does after, that put out the fire? Yeah, it takes about 10 minutes, but you put out the building on fire. Okay, and one building free, down. Yeah, you freed up a lot of, a lot of like, real estate for, for firefighters to stand. Right, right. Okay. 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 All right, next building. Do we do the same thing? Uh, we do uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, do you want to keep doing that? Yeah. I mean, oh, <laughs> yeah. Let, I, I, let's say we've done that. Right, yeah. All over town. Yeah. The fire is out. It's been two hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, Carlos? You're right. We are the good guys. <laughs> Cliffhanger! Thank you, Wilbur. Thank you, Boston. Thank you, Massachusetts. Rock over London. Let's Rock give it up for Aaron Mankey. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Tonight we are all Aaron Mankey. Thank you, crew and the toilet maker. Oreo. I hope the, uh, I hope the person that has uh, fainted is, is feeling okay? better. Thank okay. you to, uh, to Taylor and Alex and everybody here at the theater. We love this place. Bring us back. Give it up for Steve Levy. Rob Schraub. Spencer Crevender. 
Under Comptroller Jeff Davis, give it up for your mayor, Dan Harmon. Thank you, Boston. You're fucking gorgeous. You're so friendly. Thank you. I will never forget this trip. Thank you. Really, really nice. Can't wait to come back. You guys are amazing.